In the world of YouTube, we find many different and interesting people with good content. Personally, I mostly watch videos to relax, so that involves videos about games like World of Tanks or movie channels like Glider Video or Chris Tuckman. I used to watch many social commentaries as well, but after Gamergate, the whole YouTube community has literally torn itself apart. There are still some good ones, people who don't follow dogma and still have a good scientific mindset. In my case, I stuck with Thunderfoot, even though he got caught in the anti-feminist maelstrom for quite a while. And it is true that I agree with most of what he has said on these issues. I like it better when he talks about science, because that's his strong point. Today, a friend of mine shared a video of a contributor who also likes you to use your mind rather than to follow him blindly. And that's essential. He made a video in which he critiqued the Young Turks for the ideological nonsense they spread. They are very influential and that's why it is good when people offer counter-arguments and disputation. His name is Jeff Holliday. Now keep in mind that he doesn't shun the profane, which is absolutely fine by me. But if you have sensitive ears, you might want to skip this one. The premise, the new EPA legislation, radiation is bad and the EPA wants you to bathe in more of it, according to the Young Turks. Obviously laced with a lot of ideological anti-this and anti-that without any real substantiation other than the scientific consensus. Most scientists agree, etc. I will warn you up front, this is not climate change we are talking about, but radiation. So let's help Jeff Holliday by adding some more context. But I want to tell you about the news story, and this is uh, broken uh, by Bloomberg. Um, and it is about radiation levels. Just when you thought they couldn't get worse, uh, well, they're about to. Yeah, but it's not just about radiation levels. It's about a very specific type of radiation levels. And and pay attention while we watch this together. Wait, wait try and figure out what exactly what type of radiation levels he's actually talking about. Okay, just 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 listen for it. The EPA's determination sets a level. The new determination sets a level, ten times the drinking water standard for radiation recommended under President Barack Obama. Okay, so the EPA's determination sets the level, what level? What level specifically are you talking about? Are you saying the absolute safety level for, for radiation, for radiation exposure? Because if that's what you're saying, because that's it sounds like that's what you're applying, you're lying, that is not what is in the fucking article. But just wait, we'll get there. Now, radiation is not safe at any level. Incorrect. Absolutely 100% incorrect. You are surrounded by radiation all the fucking time. Did you know that your microwave runs off? It emits radiation all the time. Did you know that? Oh, hey, holy fucking shit. Your cell phone emits a type of radiation. Oh my god. Electromagnetic radiation is around us all the fucking time. It is everywhere. There are different types of radiation. Uh, you, oh, you fucking idiot. God fucking damn it. No, I'm sorry. There is such a thing as safe levels of radiation. It, no. No, indeed. There's much more to radiation than Cheng suggests. Let's keep it simple for the moment. First, I assume that Chank is talking about ionizing radiation, predominantly alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. These types of radiation are best explained in nuclear physics, literally the science of the atom. Some atoms are inherently unstable, and this means that at some point they will lose a particle. And when this happens, they turn into a different kind of atom. For instance, when potassium-40 decays, it releases a low-energy beta particle and turns into calcium-40. The interesting thing is that we have to differentiate between a radiation source and radiation. Those are two separate things, yet very important when we have to add context. 
More on this later. And that's not to be getting into the baseline of fucking physics. Like, I don't know, thermal radiation. You know, the thing that happens with heat in physics, you know, uh, convection, conduction, the emission of different types of spectrums, electromagnetic radiation because of things getting hotter. I... Mm. Absolutely correct. In fact, the transformation from solar radiation to heat is one of the key components that keeps this Earth warm. The other component is heat retention, which happens in the atmosphere thanks to gas molecules like water, carbon dioxide, methane, and other chemicals we call greenhouse gases. That is the consensus of scientists. Cenk is talking about radiation, and that radiation is dangerous. Well, I happen to know a lot of scientists and doctors who, by the way, are not ideologues, and they are pretty confident that there is a realm of radiation exposure that not only is safe, but might even be beneficial thanks to an hypothesis called hormesis. Uh, here is Daniel Hirsch, a top expert in the field, saying it's a really huge amount of radiation they are saying is safe. The position taken could readily unravel all radiation protection rules. Most radiation rules are based on the linear no safe threshold hypothesis, which should be canned because there's more compelling evidence for hormesis, which means that there is a safe threshold. And I would agree with that person too, if they were specifically talking about the baseline safety level of passive radiation exposure. Yeah, but. Now, to give you a sense of the consensus, back in 2007, remember, Obama's not president, George W. Bush is president. Mm. A 2007 version of the same document stated that no level of radiation is safe, no level. Okay. Next time, Jeff, simply point out to the LNT hypothesis not being true. That's all you need to do. All legislation is based on it. Even Bush's legislation, if written by scientifically literate people, ideology has nothing to do with it and shouldn't even be brought up. That's dumb too, but it's an easy way to put it into policy because that way it is say, well, hey, radiation is bad. I mean, you can't avoid radiation. It's everywhere. It's impossible to, to dodge. Even your even a little tinfoil hat isn't going to stop radiation from getting you. I'm sorry. Um, but... Uh, whatever. That's just a, that's just that's it's just political jargon babble to try and appease people. That's all that really is. Exactly. It's a stick given to the people like Chank to beat the nuclear energy dog with. Okay, that was under Bush, another deeply right wing Republican. So what, what does that have to do with anything? Absolutely nothing. Chank is spreading his narrative. And that goes to everybody's kids, that goes to everybody's families, and Pruitt's saying it's fine. Let's go, let's go, nuclear energy is awesome, all of the above, fossil fuels are great, nuclear is great. And if there's a meltdown, you just drink the water filled with radiation, who cares? Perhaps this threshold is being set up to keep people from drinking water during a meltdown event. You fail to understand that there's a need for a safety threshold. At some point, the EPA has to be able to say, Okay, people, from now on, don't drink the fucking water. It's too contaminated. And then there's this. What's in the water that makes it radioactive? Is it harmless tritium, a very weak beta emitter? Or is it plutonium, for instance? Too much plutonium will kill you. Probably not from the radiation, but the toxicity of it being a heavy metal. So there's radiation and there's radiation. And there's isotopes and isotopes. Some are dangerous, most are pretty harmless. Quantity matters too. The only thing this document speaks about is the quantity of decay events. Nuclear energy is pretty fucking great. It's pretty amazing. I, of course, there's always going to be risks with nuclear energy, but by even if you count into the, the nuclear meltdowns that have happened, nuclear energy is still is one of the, the most green fucking energy production techniques out there on the planet. One of the big problems that we have, and I've been talking about this for a while now, is because we're so afraid of nuclear energy that most of our nuclear power plants are really fucking old. 
because it's hard to get the public to be convinced that we need to build more nuclear power plants that are more up to date and have better safety standards. It's catch 22. Like, hey, I heard that nuclear is very dangerous. Well, it, it can be in very rare circumstances. Well, I don't want any more nuclear power plants. Well, then that means that all of our old nuclear power plants are just going to get older and less safe. It, well, but whatever. I just uh, fuck nuclear. What? Huh? Yes, that's the narrative that Chang's spinning as well. Let's consider my good friend Ben Hurd. His rationale concerning new nuclear is completely valid especially when considered against the backdrop of nearly six decades of near-perfect operational history of the nuclear power plants. Hi, this is Ben Hurd. I'm the executive director of environmental NGO Bright New World. And I'm here to say today that I really want everyone to get behind the efforts of Generation Atomic to bring a presence to the Bonn climate talks to support the use of nuclear power in resolving our climate challenges. What do you think the prospects are for nuclear if we don't show up and do something? If we don't show up again, if there's no fight put up, uh, we know what's going to happen. There will just be a, a continuing emphasis on getting this technology out and we'll do exactly what Germany has done. No actual change in greenhouse gas emissions, just a jiggling around of the technologies that are involved. The absolute opposite of what we should be doing right now. And we also have to remember that, you know, when we're not including the nuclear technologies in the discussion, we're not, we're not ruling out an old nuclear power station. We're saying no to a whole family of new advanced nuclear technologies that are coming online and coming into production, coming into commercialization right now. We're ruling out the future. We, you know, we can't retrospectively unmake things that we didn't want to do in the past. But in having this decision to say no to this technology, we're deliberately ruling out a huge part of the future. We're just putting ourselves at greater and greater risk of failure, and those consequences are incredibly high. So. We need people to show up and fight for this outcome. And do note, old operational nuclear reactors are perfectly fine. Dear friends of mine, Heather Matheson and Kirsten Murray Zeitz have been working at Diablo Canyon for years. They love their jobs. They are absolutely passionate about keeping that power plant in top working condition. And the best part, Kirsten and Heather are true environmentalists who go hiking with their families and enjoy the wonders of nature which they want to preserve and that's why they are working at this power plant. Roach who is a public employee for environmental responsibilities and he's their executive director. Okay. He said I knew that under Scott Pruitt EPA is in climate denial but now it appears to be in radiation denial as well. This appears to be another case of the Pruitt EPA proclaiming conclusions exactly opposite the overwhelming weight of scientific research. That last assertion, again, is untrue. But let's add some more context. Radiation is literally everywhere. Even the quote unquote bad kind of radiation. You have uranium in your body. You have radioactive potassium in your body. If no radiation would be safe, then sleep alone in your bed because you're partner is probably radioactive too. Where does radiation come from? Naturally occurring radioactive isotopes like potassium-40, thorium-232 and uranium-235 and 238, plus their unstable daughter products in their respective decay chains. Where do we find these radioactive isotopes? On beaches, in the ocean, in the air, in rock, in soil, in fruit and vegetables, in meat, in your kitchen countertop, in your marble floor, everywhere. And ionizing radiation comes from space as well. And that's why part of the atmosphere becomes radioactive. These radioactive particles get absorbed by molecules in the air, and that's why it serves as a kind of radiation shield. Hydrogen atoms, for instance, turn into radioactive tritium in the atmosphere, and this tritium ends up in our water supply. Nothing to worry about. Tritium is a completely harmless radioactive isotope. So there you have it. Radioactive isotopes and radiation particles are everywhere. Quit being so afraid of them. 
Also, a release of radioactive isotopes during a nuclear accident has been proven to cause far less damage than is presumed by these nuclear alarmists. As it stands, no one died from radiation at Fukushima. Who knows, perhaps 10,000 people died from Chernobyl. If we compare that to the deaths from falling off roofs or contracting skin cancer from sun exposure in your solar job, it's completely harmless. Yes, that's right. Construction jobs, especially in renewable energy, because they are so extremely labor-intensive, are more dangerous than a nuclear power plant accident. Okay, so this is from Jeff Rutsch, uh, Public Employees for Environmental Responsibility Executive Director. I'm not really familiar with the with this this organization, but I would assume this person is automatically not going to like Scott Pruitt. And hey, you know what? I feel you. I don't like Scott Pruitt either. I'm totally into that. But also, and, and I don't disagree with what they say in this, but again, this is being used in a very specific way by the Young Turks, a very disingenuous way to try and tell you what to think without actually explaining what is really fucking happening. Perhaps, if this kind of legislation was in place in Japan at the time Fukushima went bad, it might have saved all those elderly and sick people who died from the evacuation stress. But this is almost over. Let's let let's let's see if Chen can actually give us any type of context before I have to explain. I have to do the job of the Young Turks for him. These are dangerous people, and now we live in dangerous times. God help us if there is actually radiation. They're gonna allow it, and they're gonna tell you it's safe when it is. <laughs> they're gonna allow. They're gonna allow the radiation. Yeah, the the radiation is gonna come walking up, and it's gonna be like. Hey, how's it going? I just want to come and chill out with you guys. They're like, well, we must see your papers first. Please be checking with us radiation. Yes, everything seems to be in order according to the new priorities set by Scott Pruitt. You may come inside now. Yes, allow. Oh my God! And and this is this is what's so fucking dumb too is because again he's not talking about what the actual situation is. Fuck. Isn't anywhere near safe. And almost all scientists agree that it's not safe. Okay, so the main problem that we have right now is that Chenk is trying to paint this idea that this is all about what the basic borderline safe levels for passive radiation exposure is going to be. And uh, he's not telling you the whole fucking truth because, in fact, what this new level set is actually about is something very specific. But let's take a look at this article. So this is from the Gizmodo version of the article, and we got this very important line right here. They talk about how shitty Pruitt is, and he is. He's, he's a shithead. Uh, but this paragraph right here. Now, some are worried he's trying to lower the bar for, uh, deadly radiation. It's so nice to have somebody type out, uh, in a very hard-hitting scientific article, but, you know, whatever, I'm not going to be picking at it too much in new guidelines for local officials published in september the epa advised that radiation exposure during disasters 10 or more times higher than guidelines under barack obama's administration is safe bloomberg reported that's the problem this is all about during disasters not the passive exposure that we would have otherwise gotten from just average everyday life this is from disasters. The updated version of the document, which in 2007 said no levels of radiation exposure are safe, which is is not accurate whatsoever, but whatever, it's a, it's a nitpicking thing, now cites unnamed radiation safety experts as saying that radiation exposures of 5 to 10 rem, 5,000 to 10,000 m rem, usually result in no harmful health effects because radiation below these levels is a minor contributor to our overall cancer risk. Now, this is actually scientifically wrong. It is wrong, but the way they paint it makes it seem a lot more crazy than it actually is, and I'll explain in a minute. Environmental Protection Nonprofit Public Employees for Environmental Responsibility published a document on their website comparing the two guidelines, saying, Previous EPA estimates indicate that the 2017 revision would mean every 86 person would get cancer from that radiation exposure. Now, you could take this a few different ways. You could say that, well, it's one in every 86 people would probably get cancer from that. So obviously that means that it is harmful. And it is. That much radiation is absolutely harmful. It is not safe. And them saying it's safe, that is wrong. That is scientifically, factually fucking wrong. But it also isn't like... 
that much radiation and suddenly everybody explodes in cancer or their their very dna starts to unravel and they die in a screaming mess but it it, it, it there's a there's a there's a line in between this where you have to be realistic obviously this is not something we want anyone to have to ever fucking experience as bloomberg noted the much higher threshold described in the guidelines is part of a documentation provided to local officials to help them prepare for nuclear incidents like reactor meltdowns or a so-called dirty bomb blast it thus does not change environmental regulations regarding radiation exposure most of which are much lower, like 25 mrem annually for those living near nuclear power plants. And that is also a really fucking important part that this is not saying. They're not focusing on this in the Young Turks when they're talking about it. This does not change the basic borderline how much radiation you can passively take. This is specifically for disasters. Per MIT News, the annual maximum limit for persons whose occupations require regular exposure to radiation is 5,000 mRMs, while NASA has a highest recommended limit at 25,000 mRMs for astronauts during space shuttle missions, during which they're exposed to cosmic rays. So also, again, this comes down to a basic a basic misunderstanding and a really shitty way of portraying this whole issue and that's one of the reasons why i'm so pissed off at the young turks for this because it's fucked up the the whole idea behind this is they're saying possibly 10,000 mrem is uh, is a safe exposure and it's not it's not but then again astronauts that are working in the international space station are going to be subjected to 2.5 times more than that now, there's a reason why astronauts, a lot of them, get pretty fucking sick after they work in space, and that's because radiation at those levels can be extremely harmful. What this is trying to say is that if there is a disaster like this, and you're exposed to that much, technically speaking, you have a good chance that you're going to be okay. You have a one in, you have 87 out of, what, what is it, fuck, 86? Okay, you have 85 out of 86 chance that you are going to be okay but that's not to say that it's healthy it's not to say that it's safe and you shouldn't hang out there you need to fucking go you need to fucking get out well here i disagree with jeff a little you need to stay put let the fallout subside and make sure that for a period you don't eat off the land and keep consumption of water from the mains to a minimum staying put is better and safer than leaving ad hoc Besides, a dirty bomb is nothing to be afraid of. I don't get why they even mention it. A container load of bananas in C4 can be considered a dirty bomb thanks to all the radioactive potassium-40 it disperses, but no one would be afraid of it. A nuclear accident? Well, there are things you should do. Keep all the windows and doors closed, for instance. Make sure you are not in a heavy fallout zone or downwind. But most of all, remain as calm as possible. It's the stress that kills people. Freaking out isn't going to help you. And lastly, before I let you go, I just wanted to, I, I want to point this out for, so that you're realistic about what radiation means. It's important if you're going to be talking about radiation to understand how radiation works. I suggest going and looking up uh, various different amazing videos that are out there explaining how radiation works, what it does to our DNA and why it's so dangerous, but also how it functions and and how much radiation you need to get sick uh for instance you have the the basic the basic doses that we have here you take a transatlantic flight you're going to get 2.5 mrems okay uh if you a, a cosmic rays you can get 30 mrems a chest x-ray will get you 10 all of a sudden um safe drinking water limit is at 4 mrems but that's per drink uh you have the annual public dose limit, which is 100. And then you have the US average natural background dose. That's the natural amount of radiation that you will be exposed to. And that's 310 mRMs per year. So the, this whole thing, and that's one of the reasons why like a whole body CAT scan is not, it, it's, it hits you with a lot more radiation than you really should be getting. But you can handle that much because that's how much we have studied and understand that we can we can take so much radiation at a time. Now, I'm not advocating that we we should increase these limits to five to ten thousand mrems during a disaster. 
It's just a threshold for the EPA to signal the people to stay away from the water for a while. Do note that this is a yearly dose. If you keep drinking that water, so we need to acknowledge that people will probably bottle up rather than keeping drinking from the mains. However, it is good that we have a higher threshold. It probably comes with the caveat that it is relatively safe to drink, but not recommended to do for a prolonged period of time. And I feel that this is something that has been omitted in all the discussions regarding this issue. I'm just, I'm sick of the hyperbole. I'm sick of people blowing this out of proportion. I'm sick of people bending science over and anally raping it for their fucking politics. Fuck the Young Turks. And hey, fuck Scott Pruitt. And fuck Trump for, for putting this guy in charge. Because this guy's a fucking idiot. Uh, in general, just stop, stop, stop listening to Young Turks because they're just as shit as, as the regular media. And go, go dig it up for yourself. Nails on the hat there, Jeff. Don't listen to ideologues with some kind of toxic anti-agenda. Demand evidence. Newspapers don't count, by the way. And if no evidence is provided, go look for it yourself. But always check the source. See whether it is a source that links back to studies and the such like. That's the wisest thing you could do at this moment. Because honestly, radiation is a fascinating topic. It's really cool to learn about, uh, and I would absolutely encourage each and every one of you to get educated on, like, how it works. It's, it's, dude, it's some cool shit. Spot on, bro. I would like to thank Phil for sharing this video, and I would like to thank Jeff for making the effort of trying to bring some more sense to the people who might be potential brainwashies for the Young Turks. And thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.